Thank you, Helen. Uh, Gretton Healy is my name. I'm involved in energy policy, background in the European Parliament many years ago, and I'm involved in the wind sector. Uh, Double Den Commissioner, um, you're very welcome. Um, if I might direct two questions to you for, if, uh, briefly. One is um, the market change that you're speaking about, the, particularly the electric, the software as you call it, um, the current market design that we're implementing, uh, the renewable sector would find that it's difficult. Uh, the network codes are difficult because they require a 24-hour notice plus balancing responsibility, which is very, very difficult for any variable renewable energy. So we would hope that in the redesign, some thought would be given to how we can optimize the performance of variable renewable energies in the new market. So you might indicate what changes you have in mind and the timing. And the second point is uh, the new state aid guidelines that were introduced by the Commission last year are extremely restrictive to the supports that the Minister can offer to renewable energy in a, in a context where we have still half a trillion dollars of fossil fuel subsidies, something similar to nuclear and all the external costs. So we just wonder why, if we're going to go this road, we're offering so many constraints to the development of support mechanisms for renewables. Jaquiam. Brendan. Just one second, the mic is coming to you, I think. To the Commissioner, um, uh, Brendan McGrath from Gay Electric. Uh, we've been successful as a uh, PCI project for energy storage, uh, for compressed air energy storage. Um, and you mentioned in your address uh, where you see PCI as being key to integration across Europe. Um, We also talk about innovation and where innovation comes from. 95% um, of the companies awarded support to the first PCI um, grant for studies and for, for works uh, were supporting either state or semi-state companies. Only 5% of SMEs were successful in terms of uh, attracting support. Fortunately, we were one of those. But I would suggest that account needs to be taken of where innovation comes from. Uh, generally speaking, it comes from SMEs rather than from state or semi-state companies. And I think a recalibration needs to be made in relation to how those judgments are made in terms of who gets support and who doesn't get support. And I would suggest that there should be some mechanism uh, that favors SMEs to a certain extent in terms of getting through the various different hurdles that are required to get support at a European level. Yeah, it's quite understandable that in terms of interconnections and so forth, that uh, as a first cut, that they would get a lot of support. But there needs to be a clearer message sent out to SMEs uh, in relation to the type of support they will get in creating this new future. Thank you. Please, just in front of you there. And focus on questions, please, given the shortage of time. Uh, thank you. My name is Paula Byrne, and I'm a member of Windowware Ireland, which, which is an alliance of community groups calling for the reform of this government's unsustainable energy policy. Now, Minister White, despite the evidence that wind energy is incapable of reducing our CO2 emissions in any meaningful way, your government has persisted in the rollout of massive industrial wind farms and pylons a lot, a lot across this country. The SEAI have said that we save about 2.6% of our overall CO2 emissions and that we will save less the more intermittent and non-synchronous wind we put on the system. In our opinion, um, Excuse me, these questions. Yes, I'm, yes, I'm coming to that. Uh, these abysmal savings do not justify the massive social, uh, environmental, and economic costs. The cynical blocking of the wind turbine planning guidelines by this government is leading to a lot of cynicism among the Irish people. You've talked about a citizen engagement here. And um, 
Also, I would feel that your government are forcing communities into the courts to defend what you should be defending, to analyse what you should be analysing and to count what you should be counting um, in order to protect our precious and irreplaceable landscape. And if I could just uh, finally say... That I would uh, like no, to, a question, yes, please. Coming. Uh, the IIEA, which has uh, hosted... I would like to thank them very much for what I hope will be a, a very interesting day. However, you do hold a lot of responsibility for the uh, energy policy and the, the rollout of these wind farms. So the, my question is, if the IIEA members are genuine about this process and really care about this country, I would ask, um, have you become so glamorized by your own power and connections that you do not engage with the reality of this situation? Are you an elitist old boys network existing in a bubble of groupthink? I would ask you please to come out of that and engage because if you do not, the cynicism, yes, is growing and you cannot bring people along with this process of developing renewables and greening our energy future if you do not listen. And I think that would be a terrible shame. Thank you. Right. The, uh, <laughs> to those um, three uh, questions and comments, please, um, Vice thank, President, would you, you like to? Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for excellent Slovak pronunciation. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure I would be able to do it in, in Gaelic, so I really, I really appreciate, appreciate that. In Gaelic, I, the, the best I can say is slauncha. I think that's, uh, that's and it's also very, very useful. <laughs> no, but thank you, thank you very much for. Uh, for, for your questions concerning the uh, uh, electricity uh, market redesign. I think one of the reasons why we uh, feel very strongly that we, we, need, we need to change the pattern is the fact that uh, we have, uh, over the past years, accumulated a uh, lot of problems uh, uh, in, in that field. Mostly they are related uh, to the better integration of renewables uh, into the, uh, I would say, power generation mix. Exactly as you said, the, uh, the more renewables you have, better balancing mechanisms uh, you need. In some countries, uh, they, uh, they uh, are very much uh, developing the possibility of uh, uh, capacity mechanisms, capacity markets, and, uh, and of course, uh, because uh, uh, the, the energy is very strong competence of the member states. So you see such a different uh, developments across, across, across the EU member states leading to totally different price structures. So therefore, I, I think that uh, what, what we need is to really create uh, one, one frame with, of course, uh, as much respect as it would be possible for the national specificities just to uh, allow our uh, operators uh, to work on, on uh, one market and to give our uh, also consumers, I would say, a little bit more converging or harmonized choice uh, uh, to compare who is offering what uh, at, 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 at what price uh, and to do it in a much more transparent way than we have it, than, uh, we have it today. So the electricity... Uh, market redesign would be would be focused at that how to better integrate uh, uh, the renewables how to make sure that uh, we would be supporting the needed uh, types of regional cooperation and how you can work better with your neighbors uh, uh, on different aspects of electricity market, including the, the balancing, including uh, capacity mechanisms, so we can kind of uh, uh, share the assets. So we do not have to have, uh, as uh, I heard it once said, all the toys in one garden, that we can actually share it much, uh, uh, much better. And how to do it in, in a cost uh, uh, efficient way, because I mean, when you read through the documents or the positions of the, of the European leaders, from one side you see very strong commitment to the decarbonization and to the renewables. From the other side, we also feel the more and more reflections that many of these uh, technologies are becoming more mature, that they are able to compete on the electricity or energy markets uh, on their own, and therefore the, the notion of cost effectiveness is much more, much more uh, present in this field. We issued those uh, guidelines uh, for the state aid uh, for the field of renewables. We also feel that we need to have another look at them because clearly the, uh, uh, the situation is developing very, very rapidly and this is what uh, we would like to put on the table next year. If I may ask you for one, uh, uh, one thing, I think you had very successful consultation process to the Alexis uh, 
paper, and we would welcome the same because we opened uh, uh, public consultations on how this electricity market should be redesigned. It's still open until the, I think, uh, 8th of October. We try to collect as many ideas as possible so when we start our impact assessments and our legislative drafting next year, that we really would uh, have uh, the views coming uh, from all the, the member states to make sure that we are doing the right thing and we are legislating in, in, in appropriate uh, uh, manner. And, and concerning the support uh, uh, for, for SMEs, I totally agree with you that usually you see the disruptive uh, uh, technologies, new approaches and innovation coming from, uh, from, uh, from SMEs. And uh, what we would like to change and uh, improve uh, in this commission is that actually we are creating special conditions how the SMEs could benefit from the EU financial support uh, uh, better than in the past. So, for example, under uh, the Juncker investment plan, there is a special part which is devoted to the energy efficiency, which is clearly aimed uh, at SMEs uh, uh, taking part in it. Next year, we would like to add uh, um, the financial instrument, uh, which would be called smart financing for smart buildings, where we would like to kind of promote and create such a positive uh, way of uh, energy efficiency across uh, our member states because we know how much mayors, local authorities uh, like this project, how much they benefit if the schools, hospitals, or even residential areas are, are refurbished, are put on uh, energy uh, efficiency uh, path, which brings a lot of savings uh, uh, to, the, to the municipalities or uh, to, the, to the household. So that's one possibility. Second, directly aimed at innovation is that we adopted this week a uh, new SET plan, SET its abbreviation which stands for Strategy for Energy Technologies, where again we would like to uh, uh, streamline uh, the, the paperwork, uh, highlight what we see as a enabling, key enabling um, technologies for this energy transition and where the SMEs uh, should also find uh, the support for their work. And the last instrument uh, I would highlight, it's called COSMATE, means again that it, uh, support for SMEs uh, uh, which are entrepreneuring in the field of the innovation. So we'll be very happy to provide you with a more precise uh, information how to uh, approach uh, uh, these uh, new instruments and where to get the support so we will get all the necessary information and, and hopefully the results uh, when the next uh, bidding round would be around would be much more to the favor of the SMEs. Thank you, Vice President. Minister. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I'll, in relation to the question um, in respect of wind and onshore wind, I understand the concern that's been raised and I think that it is the case that the planning code has to balance the issue of amenity and concerns over noise, for example, and shadow flicker with the um, uh, requirements uh, of our energy policy and in particular our renewable energy policy. So I think that does have, there is a balancing exercise. No, it doesn't come as any surprise to anybody to know, I think in this country, no less than elsewhere, that there are tensions in that regard. And I think that we can and should seek to address those concerns and to make sure that they are properly addressed in the planning code. But I would respectfully disagree with the proposition that our renewable energy policy, in particular as it applies to wind, which is the issue, that it's unsustainable. I, I would respectfully disagree with that. I think that the evidence demonstrates that we have made great strides in relation to uh, renewable production of electricity, particular, uh, in, relation, um, in relation to the use of onshore wind. I think it has been cost efficient. And I think when you look at what the portfolio of renewables needs to be, wind, onshore, offshore, solar, biomass, all of the, the new opportunities that are there, I think that it is still inescapable that onshore wind will be a significant element of that portfolio based on what I've my assessment, and I didn't come into this job as an expert or with any particular agenda at all, but based on my own dispassionate assessment of what we have achieved to date, which has been considerable, and what we can go on to achieve. But we won't do it just with onshore wind. We also have got to look at many of the new technologies, and we're out for consultation at the moment on our new refit uh, uh, offering, which we uh, intend to put in place next, put in place next year. Um, I know it's a controversial issue and a difficult issue. And I am sensitive to that. 
I will just say, though, at the risk of uh, uh, irritating people, that I was in Denmark last week. And in Denmark, which has a land mass almost precisely half of ours, they have 5,000, and I accept the population densities are different, they have 5,000 turbines installed. In this country, with double the land mass, we have 1,450. I'm not saying we need 10,000. Don't, don't quote me or suggest that I'm saying that. I'm just trying to put a bit of perspective into the discussion. But I, yes, there needs to be sensitivity, but we also need to progress our renewable energy uh, offering, our pol uh, policy and what we do, and this has got to move and progress. And that can be done, I believe, consistent with a, uh, an enlightened and a sensitive planning code as well. Well, um, I have to apologize to those who wanted to ask questions. We've simply run out of time. You will have an opportunity now over the coffee break. So on your behalf, if I may thank Vice President Shevchovic. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> and Minister Alex White, please.